Joffrey Baratheon, Ramsay Bolton, Ollie. These are some of the most evil, despicable characters inhabiting Westeros, rightfully despised for their actions, and are the worst characters on the show in that sense. But what about the characters who don't necessarily do bad things, but are just bad characters? Two of Game of Thrones' biggest strengths are its cast and characters, but occasionally they do get it really wrong. Are you ready for some hackle-raising hot takes? Let's mispronounce some names. I'm Ben from What Culture, and here are the 10 worst characters in Game of Thrones. Number 10. Kevan Lannister Kevan Lannister is ostensibly a key supporting player around King's Landing, featuring prominently on brother Tywin's War Council and later the Small Council, even being named Hand of the King. But despite his apparently glowing achievements, Kevan doesn't really do anything or have any character at all. He's not particularly interesting and doesn't get the chance to really operate politically even after Tywin's death. In the books, he is similarly in the shadow of Tywin, but mostly because he recognizes his brother's tactical genius and agrees with his decisions. He's a much shrewder operator and has a bigger part to play in things and is killed off because he threatens to bring order to King's Landing. Not in the TV show, though. Number 9. Roz. A character invented for the screen, there initially seemed to be little purpose to Roz other than helping the series fulfill its nudity quota. Other than that, she largely served to assist great exposition dumps while they attempted to give the character a little more to do by having her work for Littlefinger and later spy for Varys. There wasn't really much to Roz, who was there to be used in whatever capacity was required in order to better serve other characters, and her scenes could quickly become irritating. Arguably the most memorable thing about her was her death and we didn't even see that happen properly. Number 8. The Mountain Whoa! Settle down there. The Mountain maybe isn't an obvious contender for being one of the worst characters in Game of Thrones, but unfortunately his hulking mass doesn't contain much apart from the fact that he's a great f***ing beast. Yes, he's big, and now he's undead, which makes him slightly more fun to watch, if only because of how everyone is more terrified of him, but that's really about it. He's a big brute who follows orders and is good at swinging a sword around. That in itself isn't necessarily a bad thing. He doesn't need to be a deep character like his brother is, but they could at least give him something more to work with. Despite being played by three different actors, he's remained pretty much the same throughout. In the books, he's a much more terrifying monster who rapes, ransacks, and murders whenever or whenever he pleases. But in the show, these feats have been reduced to events that took place before the series even started. Number 7. Rickon Stark Oh, poor Rickon. Being the youngest of the Starks meant that while his brother was off fighting a war, his half-brother went to the Wall and his sisters travelled to King's Landing, he was stuck at Winterfell with Bran. And nobody, and I mean this sincerely, wants to be stuck with Bran. Being a young child, he didn't really get any significant lines or much of anything to do except be a bit annoying and useless. In fact, his most memorable act wasn't really his, with Theon pretending to burn his body. What a claim to fame. At least Bran's story picked up a bit when they separated, and even when Rickon did return years later, it was as a political pawn, and he didn't even utter a word before his death. Couldn't even manage to zigzag either. Fool. Number 6. Jack and Hagar. A man we met back in Season 2 would not have made this list. A man in Season 2 was brilliant, a ruthless killer who had a bit of roguish charm and a lot of mystery. A man who returns in Season 5 is not the same. A man is still mysterious, but infuriatingly so. Jack and Hagar's return was a point of excitement around the House of Black and White storyline, but really, he was just there as a recognizable face to guide us and Arya through one of the most boring and repetitive storylines of the last two seasons, with no hint of the cool or charming characteristics he previously possessed, putting him very much in the duck house. It's probably a little unfair to even call him Jack and Hagar, since he's just wearing that face, but his endless whispers about who a girl is, isn't, can be, can't be quickly became incredibly grating. He's a deadly assassin who can change his appearance whenever he bloody likes, and somehow the show made him dull and annoying. Good job. Number 5. Robin Aaron. Forget Joffrey, hell, forget Ollie. This is the worst child on the show. Robin Aaron isn't as evil as the former, nor does he commit as outright a detestable act as the latter, but he's not as sweet as his nickname would suggest. Give him the chance, and you can almost guarantee he would commit all manners of atrocities. As it is, though, he doesn't have a chance to do that, meaning he just has to stand around as a horribly irritating little twerp screaming for his mother's teat and someone to be shoved through the moon. 
Moondor. True, we are supposed to hate the character, but that doesn't make him any better. When you watch other detestable characters, you're nonetheless captivated and want to see what happens. Robin appearing on screen just makes you want to turn it off. He's offered almost nothing to the plot, hasn't done anything memorable, and is simply painful to watch. F*** you, Robin. F*** you. F*** you, Robin. Number 4. Hisdazo Lorak Despite the fact that he appeared in eight episodes, was part of a central storyline, and married one of the show's two biggest characters, there's almost nothing memorable about old Hisdar. He primarily served to pop up in what felt like every episode to bug Daenerys about reopening the bloody fighting pits and also to present her with a chance to marry someone of Merini's nobility to strengthen her own position. There was the odd hint that he might have had a more nefarious purpose, but it was never really an idea the show truly explored and was mostly put to bed when he was unceremoniously killed off by the sun of the Harpy. In the books, there's a bit more to him, with greater credit given to the notion of him working against Daenerys, though even there, he's not the most interesting of characters. Number 3. The Waif like Jacken, the Waif best represents many of the ills of Arya's storyline, but without any previous coolness or mystique to help make up for it even a little bit. Similar to Arya, this girl is supposed to be no one, but instead, a girl turns her duties of training into outright bullying as a form of expressing jealousy. And that's cool. That's a fine... That's that's good. Or at least that's how it's inferred, because the waif is left incredibly thin in the character department. Now, not every character needs great development, but when she keeps coming after Arya to near comical Terminator-esque levels, it'd help if we have some understanding of what's driving her. Instead, she's just someone who we have to contend with beating both Arya and the viewers over the head with the same point repeatedly until she's blessedly killed off. And even then, it happens off screen. Da 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 da. Number 2. Sand Snakes and Ilaria Perhaps the biggest waste of potential on the show in recent years, and certainly one of the most egregious translations from book to screen, the Sand Snakes haven't been the best. Hopes were understandably high for meeting the bastard children of Prince Oberyn Martell. I bet they're really cool, especially given that they were also quite interesting in the books. But instead of highly skilled, strong, dangerous women with revenge on their minds, what we're given are thinly drawn outlines of those characters. Although it doesn't help that they're given horrendous dialogue and even worse action scenes. Elaria doesn't fare much better, though. There was some intrigue to her in Season 4, but it gradually waned as we spent more time in Dawn. What could have been an empowering storyline and instead became Ilaria just looking pissed off, then she and the Sand Snakes just disappeared for a season so that even their big moment, killing Doran, Tristan, and Mycella, carried little weight. Number 1. Doran Martell Even worse than the Sand Snakes is their uncle Doran, the Prince of Dawn and a man who wastes his life hidden away, refusing to be drawn into conflict no matter what harm comes to his people, a real champion. Doran is a pathetically weak person, which is part of the point, but there's so little to him that he becomes the definition of an absolutely nothing character. He doesn't do anything but sit around and complain. The character is completely one note, and he's at the center of one of the show's worst ever storylines and the problems with it. They could have done something interesting with him, but instead they had to make him look like an irritating, boring fool, and then die in the first episodes of season six, which was effectively the show admitting they f***ed up with Dawn before repeating the mistake by apparently forgetting all about his death and the location again! Oh, God! And that's our list. Make sure you subscribe to the What Culture YouTube channel for more lists like this, and don't forget to visit whatculture.com for daily news and articles. I'm Ben from What Culture, and thanks for watching. Oh, hello there. I'm billionaire philanthropist, not Bruce Wayne. And as you may have heard, we've actually started up a What Culture Comics channel. Oh, that's better. Where you can go for all the comics lists, all the comics news, and all the comics discussion. So go on, go and subscribe to What Culture Comics for loads of amazing comics coverage.